Hi everyone, it's Alicia from Miss Alicia Grace and I am so excited to bring you my second Nomi pattern, ME2062. This pattern is overalls. It features two views, view A, which just uses one main fabric and view B, which features a contrast on the bib and on the side panel. My favorite feature of this design is that it wraps around in the front. So if you do use the contrasting view, you are gonna have a fun design feature on your front and back legs. The pattern also features wide legs. Now you can customize these legs to be even wider if you want more drama or you can narrow them down for just a tiny bit of a flare but that's the beauty of sewing is that we can hack this pattern any way we'd like. I love personally the big flared pants. I have never seen them on overalls and so I figured why not design it. These overalls are perfect for vacation, for just lounging around, for your everyday activities like going to the grocery store. I've worn them to school already several times and they are approved by my students. They love them. So I just think it's a perfect fun addition to your wardrobe. It's a different take on um, overalls and I can't wait to see what you guys do with it. Today we are going to sew view A, however I am going to perform a hack in this video. Unfortunately, my mannequin doesn't have any legs so I can't put the overalls on the mannequin, but I will model this for you after at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. But the hack we're going to perform is narrowing down these flares. For some, this flare might be too dramatic or you might feel like it's too much fabric and that's okay, there's a hack for that. So I'm gonna show you how to perform that hack. Everything else will stay true. You'll still get the seam coming in the front. It just won't be as wide here on the side. So uh, the only pieces that change are two pattern pieces, pattern piece 10 and 12. So I'll show you that hack quickly. But other than that, everything else we're gonna sew step by step. So uh, let's get started. Today we will be sewing view A in this leopard print twill. Let's look at the back for instructions. There are some really important things for you to note here on the back side. The first one is that you need to get a pair of two inch overall buckles. Now normally buckles are much smaller. The reason why I am asking you to get two inch buckles is because when I was designing there's so much body and volume on the bottom I wanted it to balance out here on the top. Now you can find two inch button buckles on Amazon really easy. However, if you don't have any on hand or you don't wanna buy any, all you would have to do is make the adjustment to your pattern piece to make this more narrow to fit the standard size buckles. And remember to get them without a built-in slider. You will also need to get a pair of adjustable sliders and eight jean tack buttons. That's it for your notions. Suggested fabrics include chambray, cotton blends, denim, linen blends, corduroy, and twills. I've also had followers ask me if they could make it in a, like a satin and I say why not go for it. I think it would be really pretty to make it in a woven lightweight fabric as well to really just um, have this fullness be floaty. You will also need to buy some interfacing for this design and depending on if you're doing view A which is all one solid fabric or view B which includes contrast here on the side panels in the front pocket your yardage is going to differ depending on view A or view B. The Big Five does give this a rating of average. I do believe an advanced beginner can sew these overalls up. The most challenging part of this pattern is completing the front facing with the buttons and then inserting the hardware into the straps. But other than that, this is a relatively easy project to sew up. The waistband is fairly easy. Inserting the, the side panels is very easy. So I believe an advanced beginner can complete this pattern as well. As we are sewing up view A today, I am going to show you how to make a modification to the side panels pictured here in the contrast. View A also has the side panels, but it's hard to see on when it's all one color. We will be making a modification to these side plackets to make them not as full. The modifications will include two pattern pieces. This side panel is comprised of two pattern pieces, which is pattern piece 10, the upper side, and pattern piece 12, which is the lower side. We will make adjustments to both in order to get rid of some of the body here in the side panel piece. I know the body can make someone love or hate this design, and so I want to be able to show you how you can modify the side panel if you're not someone who loves as much drama in a garment. 
as we make the eliminations to the fullness, we still will have the seam that wraps around to the front. So don't worry about losing that design detail. What we're going to do is just take out some of the body here so that it's not as full. These are the written instructions for ME2062. As you can see here, view A is all the solid and view B comes with the contrast. Now for each view A and view B, it's the same exact pattern pieces. It just depends on whether you're gonna use a contrasting fabric or not. This pattern does have 20 pattern pieces and they're broken up along here. Again, you'll use all 20 for no matter if you're summing up view A or view B. Again, today for this sew along, we will be modifying pattern piece 10, which is the upper side, and pattern piece 12, which is the lower side. We are going to shrink these down to get rid of that volume so that if you don't want drama, you don't have to have it. Let's begin hacking pattern piece 10, which is the upper side. This is for both view A and view B. Now, as you can see, I've already drawn a line in marker. Um, normally I would not do this, but in order for it to be captured on camera, I wanted to draw with marker. So I've taken my ruler and I've drawn a line through the entire pattern piece, as you can see, all the way from the bottom to the top. Now, I've also marked here at the top of the pattern piece, I've marked down five eighths, which would be the seam allowance. And I learned this tip in pattern making classes when I studied back a long time ago that we're gonna cut two, but not through both sides of that line. So I am not gonna cut on top of that line. I'm gonna leave that open so it acts like a hinge. So go ahead and make your line and then we're going to cut two, not through both sides of that line. Again, I'm going to cut right to that line, but I'm not going to cross it. And then I'm gonna come up here on top and I'm gonna to cut to that line, but not through. So now you can see it's cut on both sides, but it's still hanging there on that hinge point. Now it really just depends on how much fullness you want. Here you can see I have them overlapping. I still want a little bit of body, so I'm probably going to mark it right about here. So you can see my original green line all I've done is taken it and overlapped them and swung it to the area where I feel happy. So I'm gonna go right about here, leaving about three inches, just shy of three inches. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape that all the way up. If you are someone who does not like cutting into pattern pieces like I'm doing right now, for some of you, you might consider this a big no-no or a grave sin. Well, you can also trace this pattern piece using pattern paper and cut into that. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna use the pattern pieces. Now, I understand some of you don't wanna mess it up. So that's where I would recommend just going ahead and tracing the shape of this original pattern piece on paper and then duplicating this process that I'm doing right now. As I continue to tape, you will notice that as we get to the top, because of the hinge, go at least flat, it maintains its original shape here at the top. So we're just getting rid of that fullness and we will continue taping until we get to the top. Now, obviously there is a little gap here. You can see that little gap. You can fill that in with paper behind if you'd like. Me, I'm just gonna cut straight across knowing that the fabric's gonna be filled in there. But here you go, your new pattern piece that is now not as full, not as dramatic. It's not gonna give you as big as a flare. So we need to repeat this process for pattern piece 12, which is the lower side pattern piece. As you can see here, we have taken out so much volume. And when you hack this piece, we don't necessarily have to cut it up. I can show you a quick way how to fold it if you don't want to tear apart this pattern piece. So what I've done to start this process is place a piece of tape here so that these sides match up perfectly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start folding this pattern piece until it matches up with this side. And then I'm going to place a piece of tape there just so I can keep it down flat. And then I'm just going to fold up 
the rest of this pattern piece. So now it is a true match. So when we go to sew it, I don't have to make any cuts to this pattern piece. I can just fold it, put a piece of tape here and know that when I go to cut it out, now I have the smaller side. And that way I didn't have to make any cuts to that piece. So if you are an anti-cutter, this would be the method to complete. Now don't forget, we do have a notch here. So you can add a notch here to just, when you're sewing it, those pattern pieces will match up. But because they match up here, they're gonna match up no problem. So again, you'll cut your new pattern piece in this smaller size. And then I just go ahead and cut through here to remove those pieces of tape so we don't damage or alter the pattern. Now that we've made the hacks to pattern pieces 10 and 12, let's go through the rest of the patterns to make sure we have everything ready to go. This is pattern piece one, upper front. You're going to need to cut two. This is pattern piece two, pocket facing, cut two. This is pattern piece three. This is the side front pocket. A really important thing to note while you're cutting out your fabric, please make sure you mark where all the dots are and where you're going to put your future buttons and buttonholes. I promise this is going to make everything far more easier when we get to that step. Pattern piece four, which is the side front facing, cut two in fabric, cut two interfacing, and don't forget those dots. Pattern piece five, which is the lower front, cut two. Pattern piece six, which is the upper back, cut two. Pattern piece seven, which is the back pocket, cut two. Pattern piece eight, back yoke, cut two. Pattern piece nine, lower back, cut two. This is our hacked pattern piece 10. If you are sewing up view A, you would just cut this out in your normal fabric, cut two. If you're doing view B, you would cut two in your contrast fabric. Pattern piece 11, which is the extension, cut two in your main fabric and two interfacing. This is our hacked pattern piece 12. Again, if you're doing view A, you would cut it in your main fabric. If you're doing view B, you would cut it in your contrasting fabric, cut two. Pattern piece 13 is your carriers, cut one. Pattern piece 14 is the front bib. You're going to cut one on fold. Now, a fun hack you can do for this pattern piece too is also make it more narrow at the top. So if you don't like the fullness here, you can hack it to have a design where you can cut all that fullness out as well. Pattern piece 15 is the bib pocket. If you're doing view A, you would cut this in your main. If you're doing view B, you would cut this in your contrast. Cut one. Pattern piece 16 is your back bib. You are going to cut four because our back bib is lined. Pattern piece 17 is our back panel. And if you are somebody who loves to use tags, this is the perfect placement for a garment tag. Pattern piece 18 is the shoulder strap. Make sure you cut four. Pattern piece 19 is your front waistband. Cut two of your main fabric and cut one for interfacing. And last but not least is pattern piece 20. It's your back waistband. You're going to cut two on fold and then cut one interfacing on fold. Before we begin sewing, please make sure you interface pattern piece four, 11, 19, and 20, and don't forget to mark all your dots. These will be really important as we get to the steps with those corresponding pattern pieces. Let's start sewing. To begin, we're going to take our pattern piece six, which is our upper back, and connect it to a pattern piece nine, which is our lower back. Once you finish attaching pattern piece nine to pattern piece six, go ahead and clean finish on the other side and press. Make sure you do this to both your right back and your left back. We will then attach pattern piece eight to the top of pattern piece six the back yoke to the upper back. So go ahead and attach five eighths inch seam allowance. Once we attach it, you can go ahead and clean finish it and then come back because we are going to put two rows of top stitching. Now that we've attached pattern piece eight to pattern piece six, I clean finished and pressed up. And the reason why I pressed up is because now we're going to put two rows of top stitching along this back yoke. Now you can totally omit the top stitching if top stitching is not your thing, but I love it. I think it's what makes the overalls really fun and cute. And so I'm going to go ahead and complete those two rows. Now, if you have a double needle, this is awesome. I'm just going to show you what is on my basic home sewing machine and complete those two rows of top stitching. So let's do it. After I complete the first row of stitching, I find what's really easy is to just line up the edge of my presser foot 
to that stitching to get the second row of top stitching easy and then I just keep that on the outside of this all the way down and it keeps the line even now if you have any better hacks or tricks go ahead and do that now Go ahead and repeat this step on both sides. Next, we will be taking pattern piece 12, which we modified to be smaller, and we will be taking our pattern piece 10, which we modified, and we are gonna connect the upper to the lower. Go ahead and clean finish however you'd like, press, and then come back. Make sure you complete this step to both sides. Once you finish clean finishing and pressing, you will then take that piece and connect it to the first piece that we did with the back yoke. So we were connecting the side panel back to the back. And so the way that you know that you have the right piece is that there's two notches right here and two notches on the back. You're going to match up those notches and connect. And we are going to sew all the way down. Once you've connected it all the way down, go ahead and sew 5 8 inch seam allowance. Then we're going to press towards the back and top stitch. And now that we've attached the side panel to the back, I've gone ahead and clean finished and pressed to the back. So we're pressing this way and we're gonna come alongside here and make the top stitching. Again, if you don't want to top stitch, you can skip this step, but we're gonna go down and do two rows of top stitching on the back, not on the side, but on the back. Another fun way to really make your top stitching pop is to increase the length of the stitch line. And so normally my machine is set at a 2.5. I increase it all the way to a four just to get it to pop. Sometimes I land at 3.5 as well. Um, this will just allow the top stitching to look bigger. Um, you don't have to do this step, but um, this is what I'm doing to make my top stitching pop. Go ahead and complete this top stitching step to both of your back pieces. Next, you're gonna take pattern P7, which are your two back pockets. You're going to press this down a quarter of an inch, and then we're going to create a stay stitch all the way around at 5 eighths of an inch. Once you've created the stay stitch all the way around, we are going to take off the facing, and we're gonna trim down to a quarter of an inch. So go ahead and clip those off and do that on both sides. Then we're going to fold this down 5 eighths of an inch. That quarter inch is tucked into there to create a clean finish, and we're going to stitch along this line. So we just finished stitching on the top, so now we have a clean finish on the top of our pocket. We're gonna take this over to the iron and press all of these sides at that stitch line so that we get a really nice clean finish and that we can attach it to the back of our pants. Now. If you are into embroidery or you want to do some sort of fun stitching, now would be the time to do that on your back pockets and create some sort of funky design. If that's not you, I'm not doing that today, but that's also another hack you can do for this pattern is make really cool, fun designs embroidery on the back pockets or the bib pocket. So if you want to do that, now would be the time to do that. But if not, let's go ahead and press and attach these to our pants. So here's what those finished pressed pockets look like from the back. We're gonna go ahead and attach them to our back pants. Now we're currently on step nine where we're going to attach them to the pants. And I know the drawing shows to attach them right on top of the side seam. However, it kind of got lost in translation with my sketch. This is not really what I intended for the design to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move my pocket over a couple of inches so that it's more over here. Um, you can go ahead and place your dots here if that's where you'd like, but I'm gonna move my pocket over here. I think my sketch was just a little messy and so this got lost in translation. I did not intend for it to be this far over, but instead I'm gonna move my pocket over. So if you'd like to move your pocket over too, go ahead and do that, or you can place it where the original dots are. Your choice. So as you can see, I've placed my pattern a bit further towards the center of the back panel. Uh, I don't want it right on my side seam. So go ahead and place your pattern wherever you like. We're gonna go ahead and do two sets of top stitching on all the way around, leaving the top open.
This is what your finished pocket piece should look like. Again, top stitch two rows to when you sew it on. Now we are gonna move on to our upper front. So we're gonna take pattern piece one, which is our upper front, and connect it to pattern piece five, which is our lower front. Again, we're going to stitch at 5 8 inch seam allowance. Go ahead and clean finish. I'm pressing up. You can press down, whatever you desire. Now we are going to take our front piece and our back piece and connect them face to face at the end seam all the way down. So let's go ahead and turn this face to face and we will pin at the crotch line all the way down the end seam line. Don't forget to match the notches at the inner seam. When you sew this end seam all the way down, it's going to tell you to stretch the back to fit. That's because the front leg has a little bit more ease. So just keep that in mind if you're seeing that you have some ease, it's going, the back is going to be stretched to fit. Because we are stretching the back to fit, I'm going to lay the front side or the front leg down and I'm gonna keep the back leg up on top. Now again, I'm gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch, but this way, if I need to stretch the back to fit, I can grab the top to stretch to fit. Go ahead and clean finish and repeat to the other side. Before we move on to step 13, it's really important to check that we have our dots dotted now, you can see up here at the top of mine, I have so many additional notches besides the two that the pattern recommends. I also put a notch where the pattern has the stitching line. And what I do to make this step way easier for me, again, this is an added step, so you don't have to do this. But what I do is I line up my ruler to that stitching line notch and my dot, and I draw a straight line so that I know when I go to make my stitch here in a second, that it's gonna be a straight line and it's gonna look really neat. So I'm gonna repeat that on both sides because I don't know what side's gonna be facing up when I go to sew, so I'm just gonna do it really quickly to both sides. Now again, this is a step that's not in the directions. This is just an added step for me, so I know that my stitch line is going to remain clean when I make that stitch when we piece them together. I'm using this Erin Water soluble ink pen that I purchased from Joanne. Now, once we've drawn our lines, we are going to connect our two leg pieces face to face, and we're going to stitch all the way at the crotch line, 5 eighths of an inch. Now that we have them pinned, we are going to take it to the sewing machine, and we are going to stitch 5 eighths around. Once we get right here to this dot, we are going to backstitch and then you are going to continue the seam line 5 eighths along here, back stitch at the top. Then we're gonna come back to this dot and you are going to put a basting stitch in this way. So you can even start from here and work down to the dot. Whatever is better for you, but this is going to be these two stitches right here. Once we get this dot, it becomes basting stitches and a basting stitch. We need to baste this curve and we also need to baste on this straight line. I started at the back pant leg, the back of the crotch, and I found myself at this dot. Now I'm at the dot and I'm going to do a back stitch, which I've already done. And once I've done the back stitch, I'm going to increase my stitch length to make it a longer stitch length, a basting length. I'm My machine has it at four. And what I'm going to do is make sure my needle's down. I'm gonna lift my foot and pivot. And I am now going to baste in this curve. Now I'm going to create the second basting line, which is on this line that we've drawn in down to my dot. When you complete your stitch, it should look like this. We're going to reinforce our crotch seam. Um, so what that means is that we are going to stitch above our original stitch line a quarter of an inch. And we are going to do that from the back notches all the way to the front notches. We're not gonna do it on the other side, just in between the two notches. Once you completed the second stitch, go ahead and trim this down and clean finish however you see fit. The directions don't call it a clean finish, but now would be the time to clean finish your crotch if you want your garment to look pretty inside. Now that we've clean finished, we're going to turn this extension and the seam allowance to the left. Now, I know while you're watching this video, you're like, Alicia, that's the right. But what you, the easiest way to figure it out is 
hold it up to your body and see which way is left. This is the left way, even though it looks right on camera. So we're gonna go ahead and pin it towards the left and put in a basting stitch to hold it in place. Then we wanna make sure to press here because we will be doing moving on to top stitching. Now we are moving on to the top stitching. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've drawn the shape that I would like. So that's going to be my initial top stitch. And then I'm gonna come in and do another top stitch on the inside of this line that I've drawn. And this will catch our extension underneath and keep it flat. And then we will have beautiful top stitching. Because this is the top stitching, again, I like to increase my stitch length so that you can actually see the top stitching. So go ahead and complete the top stitching and we will move on to top stitching the rest of the crotch. After we finish top stitching the extension for a faux fly front, what we're going to do is then top stitch down the entire crotch all the way to the back. Now we want to keep it on the left side. Again, I know this looks like the right side being filmed, but is the left side of the garment. So we want to keep those two rows of top stitching on the left side. Also important to note that we are not going to start our top stitching until after the stitch line. So the top stitching does not go above, it is below. Now we are going to take pattern piece two, which is our pocket facing, front pocket facing, and we are going to match it up face to face to the front matching notches. And we are going to pin and then sew from dot to dot. So five eighths inch seam allowance from dot to dot. Once you've completed the step, we are going to turn it facing the back and we're gonna go to the iron and we are going to press and then we are going to create our two rows of top stitching on both sides. So go ahead and press to the back, press and then our two rows of top stitching. Next we are going to take pattern piece four and pattern piece three and um, I like to clean finish the rounded edge of pattern piece four um, otherwise, it's going to stay unfinished. So I recommend clean finishing it however you like, with it, whether it's a zigzag stitch or you roll it and stitch it um, or serge it. Again, make sure that your pattern piece four has your dots on it and we're going to connect it notch to notch. And once we pin it, you will then sew five eighths of an inch between the dots. Repeat for both sides. Once we finish sewing to that dot, we are then going to clip diagonally to but not through the dot. Once we clip diagonally, we are then going to press the seam allowance towards the facing and we're going to understitch. Do this on both pieces. After completing the understitch, we're going to then turn towards the inside and we're going to put an additional top stitch so that we get those two top stitches. Once you create your top stitching rows, we're gonna go ahead and base this down because we will be taking this pocket and attaching it to our pockets on our pants. Next, we're going to attach our pockets together. So here is my front pant piece. Here are those pockets we just created. We are going to go ahead and sew 5 eighths of an inch all the way around. Remember that you're going to pick up these two pieces, so don't stitch it into your pants. But we're going to go ahead and sew 5 eighths all the way around both sides of the pockets to create our pocket. Now that my pockets are pinned, we're going to sew 5 eighths inch all the way around. And then you can go ahead and clean finish however you see fit. Now that we've clean finished and attached the pockets here in the back, we're going to put the front face up and we're going to put a basting line here so that this stays put together flat. So go ahead and put a basting list on both sides here and line this up on this side and put a basting stitch here. Once we've basted the top, we also need to base the sides so that this all stays together. So go ahead and match the notches and then we're going to pin and create a basting stitch right here on both sides of our front panel. For the next step, we are going to place our side panel to our front face to face. Make sure you match the notches. So here we have a notch here and a notch here and we're going to match 
and pin. And we are going to pin all the way down, matching up seams here, and pin all the way down. So once we finish pinning, we will sew, and on this side, there is a dot. We are going to base all the way from that dot all the way down to the bottom hem line. So go ahead and pin that, and I'll show you what that looks like pinned. Now that it's pinned, I'm going to start right here at this dot and go 5 eighths of an inch all the way down to the bottom of the hem. Next, we are going to grab pattern piece 11. Make sure to mark all the dots necessary for this pattern piece. We will then fold this pattern piece in half. And we are going to sew 5 eighths of an inch on the unmarked side. This is the marked side. So the unmarked side, 5 eighths of an inch. Now that we've sewn up the extension and we've closed the end, Make sure you have the dot marked. We're going to place it onto our back pant leg. All right, so I know I said back pant leg, but technically I mean the side panel on the back. So the bottom side that we've sewn up is going to go down and this is interface, but you can see how we have the two notches there. We're going to match it up with the two notches here. So I'm going to line it up and then I will pin, making sure that this is all pulled out. And then once I have it pinned, I'm going to sew just to this dot. I'm not gonna sew this all the way down. We want to this dot free, cause this is going to tuck in over here. So you'll see what I mean in a second. So go ahead and pin from the dot all the way up. Sew five eighths of an inch. So now we've pinned it up, but you can see here on the other side, the dot is right here where we're gonna be sewing to, which matches up perfectly on this side to where our last stitch seams ends. So we wanna meet right there and make sure you don't catch this when we sew. This stays open and free. So we've stitched it up, it meets, got a trim, but now we're going to flip it so it's on the inside. So as you can see, we've just sewed it in and now we just flip it to the inside because this is open so it's easy to rotate and now we have our placket so our buttons and our buttonholes will go right here buttonholes here or buttons here rather buttonholes here and we will have the perfect side pocket so go ahead and repeat on both sides next we are going to grab pattern piece 13 and for this pattern piece we are actually going to fold the wrong sides together and then you're going to go give this a press once we've created a crease, then what we're going to do is fold both sides into that crease, press, and then fold it again to create our carriers. So again, we've opened it up. We're gonna fold each side to that crease, press, and then press them on top of each other. Once it's in this long shape, we will then stitch all the way down and then cut this into even pieces to create our carriers. Now that it's folded on itself, we are going to create two stitch lines to mimic the top stitching that we've been doing on this entire pattern. So we're gonna do a stitch line on the edge here and on the edge here. Just one stitch line here and one stitch line here, right on the edge, so go ahead and do that. Next, you will measure out each piece three and a half inches to cut five carriers. So they, they should all measure three and a half inches. Go ahead and cut those pieces now. When you're finished, it should look something like this. Next, we are going to place our carriers onto our pant pieces. And so make sure you mark your dots so you know where to place them. I like to place mine face down. And then I'm gonna place it right on top of that dot. On the front side, you have two dots, and on the back side, you have three. So go ahead and pin those in place now. Once all five carriers are pinned, we're gonna go ahead and just put a basting stitch 
on top. All right, next we're moving on to the waistband and bib. We are nearly there. So this is pattern piece 19. Make sure that you have one of your pattern pieces interface. The other one doesn't need to be interfaced, but make sure you interface at least one. And as usual, my fabric marker is already fading because it's air soluble as well, but make sure you mark all of your dots as well. Take your interfaced pattern 19. Make sure again, you have these dots. These dots are gonna be really important because this is the dot that we're going to line up to the side seam. So the finished side seam, you can see it here. We are going to match up that dot to the edge and this is going to hang over this front piece. So we need to pin it here where that dot is touching. So go ahead and make that pin and do the same on the other side of the waistband. So again, we're going to pull it over here and we're going to match this dot. And pin. Then you will pin the rest of your waistband and we will sew 5 eighths of an inch. So go ahead and pin the rest and let's go to the machine. Once you have attached the front waistband, go ahead and pull up the carriers and we're just gonna baste those into place before we move on. So go ahead and just paste a basting stitch up at the top. Now that we have attached pattern piece 19, the waistband to the front, we are going to take the interfaced version of pattern piece 20 and attach it to our back. So same process as follows. Make sure you mark all the dots and notches so that this is a very easy process. Again, we're going to have it hang over 5 eighths of an inch, just like we did the front waistband. So let's get to pinning. All right, so once you've attached the back waistband to the back, remember you're leaving over that much, about 5 eighths, and then everything else, match up your notches. They should line up perfectly. And we're gonna sew 5 eighths of an inch. So here's a closer look at that finished back waistband connected. And so if you're having trouble lining up the dots, this is going to be a button. So you wanna have it in the center of this uh, extension because the rest of your buttons are gonna be down here. And so this lines up perfectly with that. And then these dots line up with the edge of the extension, leaving about 5 eighths of an inch overlap because we're gonna come through with our second piece and then sew around. So if you're having confusion about how that looks, here's how it looks. And before we forget, let's go ahead and stay stitch all the carriers on the back waistband so that we don't forget that step. Because when I was making the sample, oh my gosh, you guys, I forgot this step. So let's not forget it. Now that we have stay stitched these carriers up, we're gonna go ahead and take this aside and we're gonna move on to the bib. So go ahead and grab pattern piece 14. All right, so this is pattern piece 14, our bib. Um, I notch at the fold line just to help make this next step a lot easier. So I put notches both where the fold line is. So what you're gonna do is go to your iron and go ahead and press it down at that fold line. And then once you press at the fold line, you're going to take the bottom and press up a quarter of an inch so that we can have a perfect facing when we turn it to the back. So go ahead and press it face to face at the iron and then we're gonna fold up. Okay, now that we've pressed, it's very similar to how we did the back pocket. So we're going to put a stay stitch in at 5 eighths of an inch on both sides of our bib, and that will hold this in place, and then we're going to trim like we did on those back pockets to get rid of the facing, and once we trim, we'll be able to flip that out and then put a stitch line down here. All right, so we've gone and pressed. This is the quarter inch up. We have also put in our 5 eighths inch lines so that we can help roll it. So what I've done is gone and cut here like we did with the pocket. So now we are going to flip this right side out. And you can go back to your um, ironing board and press here, press down. And then while you're pressing down, the next thing you could do is fold this over because this will become our new stitch line as well. All right, now that we've pressed, we're going to put an edge stitch along this top of the bib, and then we're going to put an edge stitch along this side and along the edge of this rolled hem too. So we should have two stitches going down this way, two edge stitches going this way, and an edge stitch along this front bib. 
bib. So this is what it should look like when it's finished. We have our stitch up here, and then we have our two top stitches going down the side. So now it's time to place pattern piece number 14, the front bib pop pocket onto the bib. So I jumped ahead because this is the exact same step that we did for our back pockets and our bib. Again, you're gonna fold down at the fold line. You're gonna press up a quarter of an inch and you're gonna go ahead and put in the 5 8 inch line all the way around as our guideline. Then we're going to cut here, do the same thing, go repress it and get ready to sew it onto our bib. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put a stitch line on the edge stitch. And then once we complete that edge stitch, it'll be time to place the pocket onto the bib. So go ahead and create that stitch line and then we will put the pocket on the bib. Make sure you mark your dots so that you can place your pattern correctly. So don't forget to mark your dots. Now we're going to place our pocket within those dots. And once we're happy with the placement, we're gonna go ahead and pin it down. And then we're going to do two rows of stitching all the way around so that we can continue on that top stitching. Now that we have finished top stitching our pocket onto our bib, we are going to connect our bib to our waistband on the front. So, we're going to attach it again. We have those dots there that we put in earlier. So I'm going to line it up to the dot and pin. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side and pin. There's that dot, match it up to the dot and pin. And then I'm going to match my notches with the notches on the waistband. And we will sew 5 8 of an inch. So again, once we're finished pinning, matching up to the dots, we're going to sew 5 8 of an inch. Now that we have attached our bib to our front waistband, we are going to fold the bib. And you need to take your second pattern piece 19, which is the front waistband that is uninterfaced, so no interfacing, and press up the bottom edge a half an inch. Once you do that, we are going to attach the waistband and sew in 5 eighths of an inch all the way across. So as you can see, I've pinned up top, matching notches and the dots to the side of the bib. We will sew this 5 eighths of an inch to complete our waistband. I forgot to tell you that as we complete this step, we also need to sew up 5 eighths of an inch on both sides of the waistband. So 5 eighths of an inch on both sides of the waistband. I totally forgot that step, but it's not too late. Let's get it. So once you've completed the step, go ahead and trim this down like so. And I like to do a little clip of the corner. And then we are going to turn this inside out and top stitch. So here is our completed waistband trimmed. I'm going to pop this and turn it back to the front. And then you will have to just push out the corners and make it look all pretty. Here's our bib. So now we are going to press this and we are going to flip it over on the other side and create two rows of top stitching, both on the bottom and the top. So what I like to do is add the pin so that I make sure that it is catching not only on this side, but on the other side, very clean, and it's gonna be a beautiful finish. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is create our two rows of top stitching on this edge and on this edge, so we'll have one, two, one, two on our top stitching. Now, do not sew over the carriers. You're gonna have to break stitch, so you'll start right here, stop, and then start right here, 
go all the way here, stop, and then go finish out. We don't want to sew over these. Unfortunately, we just have to break the stitch. So this part is a little bit tedious, but once you finish the top stitching, it's going to match all the other top stitching all along your bib and your pockets and everything. So it's going to the, the, it's going to turn out really well. Now that we've top stitched, we can't forget to top stitch the sides. So go ahead and match your top stitching so we can match here on the edge and match the bib. So complete on both sides. Now we are grabbing pattern piece 16. There are cut four of this pattern piece. And so one is the lining and one is your actual main garment. And so you're going to repeat the step that we do right here for both the lining and the main. So what we're going to do is take it, connect them, sew them up five eighths of an inch and the back seam, five eighths of an inch stitch. And you're gonna do this to both the lining and your main. Mine just happened to be in the same fabric because that's how I cut it out. So again, five eighths of an inch, five eighths of an inch. Once we connect, we're gonna press to the left, which I know again, looks like the right on the video, but we're gonna press to the left and then we're going to get pattern piece 17 and we are going to connect it at the notches now this is pattern piece 17 and i think this is the perfect pattern piece to go ahead and put a little tag if you're into putting tags in your garments i'm going to put mine here but we are going to connect this to our pattern piece 16. so for this step you're going to match notches now what i do is i sew 5 eighths of an inch to this dot once I get to this dot, I keep my needle down and I pivot this notch to match this notch and it comes up. It's easier to do while sewing, harder to explain while not sewing, but you're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch to the dot, keep your needle down, lift the foot, and then you're going to pivot this piece so that it now matches up over here and the rest will follow. So it will look like this when it's finished. You can go ahead and iron out and that little crease will come out once it's all pressed correctly. But this is what it should look like. So go ahead and repeat that same step to both the main and the lining. Now we are going to take pattern piece 18, which is with a cut four, and we are going to put them face to face. And we are going to stitch five eighths of an inch all the way down both sides. So again, I'm going, these are our straps and I'm going to put them face to face. And then we are going to stitch all the way down both sides, five eighths of an inch. Once you sew up both straps, go ahead and trim the seam allowance down to a quarter of an inch. Go ahead and turn them inside out like this, and then we're going to do two rows of top stitching on both sides. Now that our two straps are top stitched, we're gonna go ahead and attach our straps to our main side, not our lining. And the way that we do this is we're going to line up the edge of our strap with the edge right there. It should be dotted, but if your dots have faded like mine, that's where we're going to line them up. Go ahead and pin. And then we're going to take the other strap, which yes, they will overlap. Again, lining it up right here, but we are only gonna sew to this point right here. So when we finish our 5 8 seam allowance, they won't catch one another. So go ahead and pin matching up there and we're going to sew 5 eighths and 5 eighths. So when you have finished attaching it, it should look like this, a perfect diamond. So again, we've sewed it on 5 eighths and 5 eighths. Next, we will be attaching our lining. So go ahead and pin 
we will be sewing five eighths of an inch from the top down to the corner and the other top down to the corner. Leave the bottom edge open. We're not sewing this up yet. Before we flip it inside out, I want to trim off this excess because it won't turn as neatly. So now that I've clipped off the excess, I'm going to turn this inside out. Go ahead and take it to the iron and press it all out. So we have our main and then we have our lining. So go ahead and press because our next step is going to be, you called it, top stitching. Once you finish top stitching, we are then going to put in a basting stitch down here at the bottom so that the lining and main fabrics don't slip. Next, we are going to attach our back bib face to face to our back waistband matching notches. So you can see here there's double notches. We'll match those notches. And remember the dots, we will line it up with the dots on each of the waistbands, and then we will sew 5 eighths of an inch across. All right, now that it's pinned, just to show you up close, the bib, back bib, should match up with that dot. So you're going to sew all the way to there. 5 eighths of an inch, this should match up with this dot, and this side matches up with this dot. All right, go ahead and sew 5 eighths inch seam allowance, and we will attach the back bib to the back waistband. All right, this is what it should look like when it's all connected. Again, you're gonna have a little bit of that overhang. What we're going to do next is take our pattern piece 20, which is the back waistband that did not have interfacing on it. We're gonna pull the bib back down and like we did with the front waistband, we're going to attach this one. You do need to go to the iron and iron up half an inch before we set it into place. So go ahead and Fold this up half an inch, go press, and come back. So just like I did with the front waistband, once it's attached, fold it under. I pin it on the outside, and then we're going to do the two rows of top, stop, top stitching like we did on the front waistband to complete our top stitches. So again, two rows of top stitching. Remember to break for the carriers. Now that we've finished the two rows of top stitching on the back, it is time to do the finishing. I've attached three buttons here on the extension and up here on the waistband. Do that on both sides. Um, you'll use buttons that have the little nail and the button. And what you do is you force this up through the fabric and hammer it down. I'll show you how to do it on the bib, but I went ahead and did this on the side. The next step we need to do is to make sure that our button holes match with the buttons. So our extension goes into here and we need to make sure that our lines are drawn correctly and line up with the button. So I'm gonna have a button hole here, a button hole here, and a button hole down here. So go ahead and make those buttonholes and hammer in your buttons. Remember to mark the dots from your pattern pieces, and this should be a very simple step. If you have never done this before, don't worry. Sometimes it's a little hard. You can see here I had a tough time with this one, which caused it to dent, but no one is going to notice that, only you. So here is my first buttonhole complete. Now I'm gonna show you a tool that I use to open up my buttonholes and the fray um, that I use, the fray glue, I guess it's called. I don't know the technical term, I'll show you on film. But you'll notice that I had my fingers down when I was helping to guide it. It's just because this is such a thick piece of fabric, this denim fabric, this stretch denim, 
that it's a lot of layers. So I like to guide my buttonhole machine a little bit, give it a little help if it gets stuck. You might not have to do that because your fabric or your machine is a rock star, but this is my home sewing machine that um, probably could use an upgrade. So in order to create a clean cut in my buttonhole, I use this tool that I got off Amazon. I'm gonna go ahead and place it under and then stab it down and it creates the buttonhole. But in order so that it doesn't fray, I use this. You can purchase it from Joanne, Hobby Lobby, Amazon, and it's called Fray Check. And so all you do is you just put a little bit onto your garment and then it won't fray. So this is the end result. Go ahead and do this to the remaining five buttonholes, one, two, and the three on the other side. And then you'll be finished with the buttons and buttonholes on the pants and we'll move to the bib. Now that we have finished the buttons and the buttonholes, we'll move on to the bib. So again, you should be well versed in this, but if you're confused, what you're going to do is take the nail type screw piece. I don't know formally what it is. And you're going to finagle it into position. So you can see here, I press the fabric all the way down. And then I'm going to take my button top and kind of set it on there in place. And then I'm going to hammer Once you hammer it into place, it should be very sturdy and strong. Go ahead and repeat that to the other side. All right, for this next step, we are going to do the straps. Again, you're going to have to use two inch buckles. Uh, if you have buckles that are smaller, then you're going to have to adjust the size of the strap and narrow this down. I'll show you the difference in size. So you can see here, this is an inch and a half and this is a two inch buckle. So I got these off Amazon. I need bronze, but we're going with silver today. Um, so yes, you'll see the difference here, two inches. If you don't have two inches, then the adjustment that you're gonna have to make is to make this more narrow so that it fits within this buckle. If you can see, it doesn't quite fit. Two inch buckle fits perfectly. So the first thing we're going to do is take the slider bar and pull it up through and then back down. Like this. And I'm going to do it to the other side as well. So again, this is the slider bar. I pull it through the top first, move that bar and slide it through to the bottom. Okay, now we have our slider bars on. Next, I'm going to take the rest of my strap and pull it through the buckle. As you can see, I've pulled it through. And I'm going to do that to the other side as well. Now this next step takes a bit of finagling, but what we're going to do is we've slid it through. We're going to slide it in and maneuver it underneath this slider bar. So I usually try to start with one edge and then I pull it through. And it loves to be difficult because it's a lot of fabric underneath there. And because I'm filming tutorials, so it wants to be difficult as well. So then I'm going to 
straighten it out. Make sure I like it, get rid of those wrinkles. Make sure it's good on both sides. And once I've put it through, I'm then going to roll this down one time and roll it down again. And I'm going to stitch right here just on this edge. That way, when I try to pull and adjust, this is gonna get stuck right here, so it's not gonna be able to move. So again, I'm gonna put a stitch line right here. And it's only through that one side. Everything else is pulled away. When both sides are finished, it should look like this. The last step is to hem the bottom of our pant legs, um, roll it up two times, and then stitch, and you are finished. That's it, we did it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I can't wait to see what you do with this pattern. If you use materials beyond the suggested fabrics, please be sure you tag me, tag Simplicity as well. And I can't wait to see how you style this, where you wear it to. Thank you so much for your support and I'll see you next season. Bye.